This video talks about some of the pictures associated with medial inferior pontine syndrome. Now this is a cross section of the pons. We can take a look at this small diagram here. I know it's not very visible, but uh, this is the cerebellum right here. This is the pons, the little bubble area right here, and this is the cross section of the pons, the inferior section of the pons. So when we take, take a look at the picture like this, this is the inferior re region, and obviously this is the medial region. So we were talking about medial inferior pontine syndrome. So this must be kind of this region that is going to be affected. Now, this, this region right here, the region number 21, is the corticospinal tract. This is the medial lemniscus. This is the abducen nucleus. So in inferior pontine syndrome, usually the abducen nucleus is not the one that's affected. It's actually the abducen nerve that has an effect ipsilaterally. So the abducen nucleus has its nerve coming down right here, like so, and that's what's affected in a medial inferior pontine syndrome. Other structures, for example, the facial nucleus, which is in 13, is kind of moving laterally. Medial inferior pontine sy syndrome never includes this area. If it does, if facial nucleus is affected, then it's not medial inferior pontine syndrome because that's defined by the fact that only abuse and nerve is going to be included in it. Okay, and this sulcus right here, this tiny sulcus right here is the basilar sulcus, sulcus of the prawns. Um, and you can see that this is the root of cranial nerve 8 right here. So kind of moving laterally, you have the other cranial nerves. Looking at a more simpler version of the same picture is right here. This is the corticospinal tract. And you can see this is the abducens nucleus. And the tract kind of falls or runs like that. Facial nucleus is very close to the abducens nucleus. But it is lateral to the abducens nucleus. The next diagram I want to talk about is the, the blood supply of the brain. Um, and you can see that this is pica, posterior inferior cerebellar artery, which is responsible, well, if it's uh, damaged or if, if, it is, um, if it is damaged, then we have lateral medullary syndrome. Anterior spinal artery is right in the middle, which is stemming from the two vertebral arteries, which is this one and this one and anterior spinal artery is responsible for medial medullary syndrome. The two vertebral artery joined to make the basilar artery right in the middle. These are the pontine arteries branching off the basilar artery. This is the superior cerebellar artery, posterior cerebral artery, and then we have posterior communicating and moving on to the circle of Willis right here. The next picture I want to talk about is this one. This is a um, a view of the basilar artery where it's passing on top of the pons. This, this bubble area right here is the pons. This is the superior cere cerebellar artery which is going to the superior cerebellum. This is ICA or anterior inferior cerebellar artery which is running like that. Um, and then that's PICA, posterior inferior cerebellar artery which is also responsible for lateral medullary syndrome. The last picture I want to talk about is this one. This is also a simplified version of the uh, posterior inferior cerebellar syndrome. Um, sorry, medial inferior uh, pontine syndrome. And you can see this is the corticospinal tract. This is cranial nerve 6. This is the cranial nerve nucleus. This is facial nucleus, which is not affected in medial uh, pontine syndrome. And somewhere along the line, there is the corticospinal tract not visible in this diagram.